Welcome everyone to Nicola Valley Talk, a product of experienced Nicola Valley bloggers, which promotes our community, businesses, nonprofit agencies, musicians, local artists, and tourism, brought to you every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. I am your host, Tanya Stewart, and your eco-blogger on Experience Nickel Valley. Safely tucked away in my kitchen, practicing self-distancing and staying safe. Now, let us get to the show. Let's get the show on the road, I guess. Many may know our guest as a business owner, entrepreneur, and has your eyes safely in her view. Let us welcome Janine Gutterson from Vision Optical, Vision Quest Optical and Gifts. Welcome, Janine. Hello. Hi, Janine. How are you? I'm good. Thank oh, you. good. And I'm so we're so happy to have you on as a guest tonight um, because we're kind of like doing this tourism and. Last week we had Melvina White, um, who did an outstanding job as uh, as commenting on tourism and what we need to bring tourism into our downtown area, which I know your business is located on um, on Koshana Avenue, and I'm going to put it up here on 2001 Koshana Avenue, and which is Vision Quest Optical and Gifts. Okay, Janine, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And the beginning one is, Janine, could you provide a, us with a snapshot of yourself, a bio of sort? Who are you, so to say? I've been in a contact lens fitter for 31 years. Um, I opened my store in Merritt uh, 11 and a half years ago. And I used to have jewelry at Creative Company, and I couldn't work there and here. So that's kind of how we started into the gift part of it. And then we've had 41 other local artists that make things and bring them in. And you have the optical part, right? And I mean, and which brings um, on to my next question, um, Janine, which came first, the optical part of your business or the gift side? The optical part came first and it just kind of turned into be a good place to sell the jewelry I made. And when I opened, there was no place in town where you could buy any native art. so. We tried to focus on that and we have a number of native artists here quite a few jewelers that make different things and oh sorry here and this is a, I'm showing a picture of your optical I mean is this just a small part of the choices a person could have with their obstacle optical yeah we have over 500 frames so there's wow. always something for everyone and it's a good selection yeah we don't necessarily carry the most expensive frames but they're all made in the same factories and there's a lot of people in this town who need to have reasonably priced eyewear. Well, since eyewear is quite expensive and it's, I mean, yeah, and there's at this time, especially with a lot of people not making extra money, I mean, it's, it would be hard to um, come up with that money for, for um, lenses and, and, and things like that. And and how and how does a person go about that, Janine? Um, well, do they just a prescription? So you have to go and see an optometrist or an ophthalmologist first. And we have I think three optometrists in town now. Mm -hmm. And you just go see them and have your eyes examined, and then you bring your prescription in, and we can fill it. Okay. And so they can just come in, and then and then you take care of the rest, right? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, well, very good. Okay, good, Janine. Could you provide our listeners the background of how you came up with this idea of opening up an optical and a gift store together? It, I didn't really come up with an idea. It just sort of happened. We had a really big store, and the optical didn't take up all the room, so we tried to fill it with other things. And I make jewelry, so that makes it. So I brought in my jewelry and. There's other things that I'll buy and bring in, but we have a lot of different consigners who make jewelry as well. There's, we have four different native jewelers that make things, and we also have paintings and drumsticks and dream catchers and purses and bags and a little bit of everything. A little frogs. <laughs> Well, I happened to take these, well, I didn't take these pictures. Actually, Julie um, 
or Yano um, took them. And so I stole them from her to show this. And, and could you tell a little bit about this frog? It's a purse, right? Yeah. It's a native design by Josh Davidson. And they're, these ones are mass produced, which brings the price down quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. The artwork is all Canadian. And on, and you can see right here, I'm sorry, I'm going to take, this is your picture, right? Or your, My your family. earrings. Yeah, those are earrings that I made. My daughter went to the Dominican Republic and she came mm -hmm. up with these feather earrings and they looked like they'd be fun. So we ordered a bunch of feathers and made a bunch of different earrings and then. Yeah, I don't wear earrings because I find I'm always grabbing my ears and tucking them. So I end up, I ripped my earlobe one time actually. And so Janine, please provide our listeners exactly what they will experience when they step into your beautiful store. When you first come in, the first thing you usually see is our cat. He's the store <laughs> breeder. But we have a lot of jewelry in the store that's locally made. We have a number of paintings by, we have four different local artists that paint. We have hand-painted jewelry, which is really nice. A lady in Logan Lake makes those, and she also makes greeting cards. And she has oil pour paintings and regular oil painting she's got quite a bit in here and her stuff is gorgeous and if you're coming in for glasses we have over 500 frames um, we can sell any type of lenses that you want or that you need generally we aim for what's best for you in the situation you're going to be wearing them in but it doesn't cost you over a thousand dollars to buy a pair of glasses usually they're a couple hundred if you have a really weird prescription it can cost a little more but generally they're fairly reasonable so Janine, I'm going to go on to the next question. Um, I can honestly say that your store is very unique. I you could spend hours in there and then come back the next day and then find and spend more hours and and find different things that you missed from the day before. Items that that are not you have items that are not mass produced, as you said earlier, and um, and have that special uniqueness that you do not find anywhere else. Please explain to our listeners who is your target audience and how your business has grown by providing what your client wants. Well, because we live in a very small town, we usually only have one of everything. We don't do a lot of duplicates because it's more fun to have something that's uniquely yours and no one else's. Um, we do deal with a lot of tourists over the summer months and they like the native art and the jewelry and there's always something new and different to look at. You have one picture up there, it's a snowy owl made out of fish scales. That That is very unique. I would never have thought of using fish scales for anything other than to maybe throw in the garbage, but <laughs> he turned it into an amazing art piece. I find it beautiful. Carolyn Litton made it. And she okay. makes a lot of jewelry and she makes cards with birch bark on it, art on them, which are really mm -hmm. pretty. This is a collection of jewelry. Some of it is made here, some of it's local, some of it I've made. Well, and that's what I find with your store is so unique. I mean, with all the different, I, and and unfortunately, I tried to upload a chain necklace because I know you have a lot of rhinestones and I think even um, like uh, glass ones, necklaces, a ju like uh, rocks, certain rocks, or, or they- yeah, um, of, of rock necklaces. Um, mm -hmm. They're all fitted with sterling silver, but there's there's always something for everyone and the shiny ones <laughs> that you have in the in your window <laughs> there when a lot of gemstones there's a lot of amethyst and topaz and quartz really see i'm not quartz. yeah and I, see i'm not a, a jewelry like first per se but i'm telling you when i walk by your store though the, the shiny ones just glisten and they look so beautiful and so last week on nicola valley talk malvina white provided our listeners the benefits of tourism and how this provides economic development and growth within our town. How has tourism affected you, your business, and what do you think could be done to bring more tourism to Merritt and to our downtown area? Well, when they closed the tourist information booth out on the highway and everyone had to come into town to go to the bathroom, it brought in a lot more tourists than normal. And because they were already downtown, they stopped and stayed and looked around. And so it, that really benefited the town in a weird way. But. Oh, 
<laughs> a visitor. <laughs> He thinks he can get into everything. <laughs> well, maybe he just wants to be on the Nickel Valley talk. Welcome, Kitty. Well, he doesn't want to get left out. He's... And he shouldn't. He looks <laughs> cute. <laughs> That's so neat. He has lots of friends that come and play with him. And there's no. a lot of tourists. He's been in here for two years now. So we have yeah. to bring him back the following summer to play with him again and see what he's been up to and how big he's gotten. and. And we do have a large group of people that come up from the coast frequently, two or three mm -hmm. times a year, just to come and have lunch at the hotel across the street and to come and shop here, which is nice. And with all of our country music art and murals and museum, it brings a lot of tourists in and all the biking trails and everything else that they've done. And having the tourists come in makes a big difference to this this store. Summertime isn't usually when you sell a lot of glasses, so the, the, the art and the jewelry and everything kind of fill in the gaps there. So, can you, so in, in, in some ways, having tourism does it benefit. Helps. It's a huge part of our business. Yeah. And this year after we were closed for a few weeks because of COVID and then when we reopened, about 90% of the clientele was tourists after that from wow. all over BC and Alberta. And, Mm -hmm. We didn't expect very many tourists at all, but we had tons of local tourists, which was nice. <laughs> which is nice. And and you're situated in a great spot in downtown Merritt on the corner, in which you were saying that uh, people come and have lunch across the street at the Coldwater Hotel. So Janine, could you share with our listeners what is special about the Nicola Valley and why this should be a destination spot for all travelers? Well, there's so much to do. You can go fishing or hiking or biking. And we're really close to the lower mainland. So you can drive here in a couple of hours and it's like you're in a totally different world with very little traffic and pollution and noise. And Merritt has one of the best places to stargaze and look at meteor showers. And most of our lights are aimed down so we don't have a lot of light pollution in the sky to block the view. And there's, there's lots to do. There's museums and craft fairs when they're not all closed for COVID. And <laughs> there's quite a few little unique shops downtown, which makes it a nice walk in the afternoon. And everyone can go swimming and boating and without having to drive quite as far as Kelowna or Kamloops. But um, Janine, due to COVID-19, many businesses have had to close their doors. How did COVID-19 impact your business? Well, for March and April, when we were closed for most of them, that definitely had an impact. But since then, it hasn't really been all that bad. We've noticed very few local people out shopping. It's mainly tourists. Mm -hmm. um, I think they like coming here from bigger cities because even though we practice all of the social distancing and safety rules, it's not quite as obnoxious as it is in some places. Like People are a little friendlier about it. and. I know in my store, we limit the number of people that can come in, but that really doesn't have much of an effect because it's usually small groups downtown. And the cats <laughs> down. I can see them creeping behind you. <laughs> yeah, the, only, the only issue you would have is, is telling the person to move along because you're going through and looking at everything eh? like move along I want to get to see everything that's in this store because it's so many things to see well having uh, so many people making different things to bring in mm -hmm. you never know when they're going to come in with something new and there tends oh. to be new stuff every day and there are people who come in here regularly no one ever sees everything it's it's not even possible I don't think um, could you share with our listeners what the experience Nicola Valley bloggers and this talk show means to the community and how in your opinion is it benefiting local businesses musicians nonprofit agencies artists and tourism in Merritt BC well it introduces Merritt to people that normally wouldn't know anything about it I know before I moved here it was literally just a place you stopped on the side of the highway up at the rest area to go to the bathroom and 
but to actually come in and come downtown and meet people and see everything that there is to do and the blogs definitely show that because we lived in Kelowna for 13 years and all my oh. family was on the coast and we rarely ever came into town mm -hmm. but with this people get to see what's here or part of what's here and makes it a lot nicer and it's and it's beautiful downtown right yes we've got all the big trees and there's not very much traffic and the flower beds and everything that's really pretty little waterfall and spirit square and okay so I'm going to go on to this really quick these flashcards because we got some time um so my first flashcard question Janine is not only do you sell sell and display handcrafted items you also make your own crafted jewelry please tell us about this well I started making jewelry when my mom was sick because there wasn't really anything to do when I was down there taking care of her and when she did die I had like 200 pairs of earrings which was way too many to wear so um, flashcard question number two I have heard that you carry books from local authors when possible could you name some of these local authors who live in our beautiful Nicola Valley? I have I have CDs from local artists. Rather okay. Than, we have ones from Quade Lindgren and Jackie mm -hmm. Sterling and Crystal. Okay. Wow. Their CDs are nice. Okay, so flashcard question number three, Janine. What advice would you give to someone wanting to open up a business in our downtown core of Merritt, BC. One of the most important things is where you're located. If you can be on this block of Quilshena, it's your best bet. They are starting to open up down on the next block over by the hotel. And that's, <clears throat> and that once it builds up, it will make a big difference. But you just have to know what's here and, and mm -hmm. the new council and mayor make things easy to do business with. And you've been open for how long, Janine? 11 years. Wow. That's a kudos to you. Eh? That's a lot of work too, and right? It's, it's been sad to see a lot of other stores open up and then have to close. And Yeah. It's, you never want to see any business shut down like that. But. No. And, and, you know, and that's, I think one of, one of our um, biggest objectives here with Nicola Valley Talk and Nicola Valley um, experience with the blogs and stuff like that is to create more of a uh, community unity. And most of our stores, our prices are really reasonable. They're the same or lower than in the big cities. Mm -hmm. And so there's not really a good reason to leave town. But So that'll just make our viewers have to go into your store and browse about. That's mm -hmm. all. And we have okay. a, we have that one big drum that you had a picture of. And oh yes, to come in and play with it. And is it this one here? That one, yep. That is beautiful. I, 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 it, it's a really nice sounding drum, and mm -hmm. we get a lot of impromptu music performances out of people, which is kind of nice. Yeah, that is, oh, that is so nice. And we also have an Indian headdress. What? And. Basically, we just let people try it on and take pictures. Oh, that is so neat. Well, there you go, people. You want to wear an Indian headdress and take get a picture of yourself. That would make an awesome Christmas gift picture. <laughs> wow. Like, like it yeah, would. I, I'm just thinking of that. That would be really neat. I think we pretty much covered everything. Yeah. Oh, I know one thing. Um. Sorry, I never put your the the hours that you're open and the days. Could you please provide us with that? We're open from Tuesday to Friday from 10 to 6, Mondays and Saturdays from 11 to 5. And we're closed Sundays. Well, I have to say it is beautiful. And um, people, please, like Christmas gifts, um, shopping for birthday gifts or anniversaries or any things special I mean this is a place to go to and and buy that special unique gift for that person that can be passed down through generations and um, mm -hmm. truly check out um, vision quest optical and gifts and get your eyes your optical at, at Janine's and your contacts yeah
Yes. Okay, Janine. Well, I thank you so much for being our guest. And um, yes, it was a pleasure. And uh, and we provide forty-one different local people an income from selling their art too, which is which is good for them. Which is yeah, that is totally awesome. That's that's a huge amount of people, Janine. And and wow, thank you for that. And um, I thank you again. I'm going to let you go. And I will talk to you soon, okay? Wow, I'm telling you, like, like you see a person on the street or see a person in a business, you really don't know who they are and, and um, what to expect from them. But Janine, she is an amazing, classy lady, I tell you. And I, I guarantee her store is amazing. Um, and uh, what a lot of insight from her. And I thank her so much. Janine um, Gufferson for um, being my guest on being a guest on my on talk show or well, our talk show again I'm your host Tanya Stewart eco vlogger with experience Nicola Valley also your host with Nicola Valley talk that airs on 7 p.m. every Thursday Pacific time and is on experience Nicola Valley Facebook that's how you go through to, to watch it. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little bit of fumble there. Um, helping promote our community, businesses, nonprofit agencies, musicians, artists, and tourism and merit. So please join us next week, same place, same time, with Jennifer Shell, who will discuss homeschooling. And I am excited about this because I'm thinking of homeschooling my child. And I think I need a lot of pointers and tips about this, okay, before I know what I'm getting into. Okay, so again, thank you very much. And remember the four R's, reuse, recycle, rethink, and reduce our landfill supply.